Hello and welcome back to Middle Age Moto. I am out for a cruise. It's been a bit, uh, if you see my last video, I've been, been a little bit busy, but I'm gonna try to be a little bit more consistent now. And I sound like a broken record, I just need to do it instead of saying that on a regular basis. It is 55 degrees and uh, my clock says 9.30 central time, but it's actually 10.30. I still haven't switched it from daylight savings time. Uh, today, uh, first of all, I wanted to just get something off my chest that's been bothering me this morning. <laughs> it never fails. I am so over technology. I consider myself, you know, pretty tech savvy. Okay, I work for a technology company. That doesn't really mean a whole lot, but I've always been, you know, kind of an electronics guru type of guy. But this GoPro to phone sync, you know, you'd think in this day and age they would make it to where it's pretty much flawless. And it is so hit or miss. For those of you that don't know, you can actually hook your GoPro through the app on your phone. So you can, what I do is I get my gear on, I start my bike and warm it up. I get on the bike and back it out. Then I turn the camera on because the trip that I take pretty much uses 100% of the GoPro battery and I don't want to have to swap batteries out. So I wait until I'm ready to leave my house. Then I click the GoPro on. And then I ride out a little bit to get to here, probably five or 10 minutes, which technically I could turn it on here but uh, my luck, I'd see something that I'd miss. So I pretty much have the GoPro on my entire ride and it works out perfect. But what I do is I turn the GoPro on while I'm sitting on my bike and it's running. And then I look it up on my phone to make sure it's centered and it's sitting correctly, you know, on my helmet because I bump it and I move it and that kind of stuff when I'm putting the camera in the, in the housing and all that kind of stuff. Well, it's hit or miss. You know, again, today I get the camera I'm sitting in the house so now what I do is I hook it up to the phone just to make sure there's no issues that I can reset everything if I need to or re-establish the connection from scratch if I need to which happens quite often and I hook it up to format my SD card to make sure I have plenty of room on the SD card and everything worked fine and I get on the bike I open the phone up, the GoPro's on, cannot detect GoPro. And it wants me to go through the entire setup again. Reboot my phone, try it again. So hopefully things are in line. Uh, I apologize if they're not. Uh, I just pretty much started the GoPro manually right from the GoPro itself. I can't get it to hook to the phone. So now I'll have to delete it out of the phone and reinstall it. It's just a total pain in the ass in plain English. But okay, enough with that rant. Uh, another thing uh, that you know this whole thing triggered something else in my eyes so I get on my bike today and uh, you know I look down and many of you know that through the Christmas holidays I took my bike in to get the sending unit for the fuel pump because my gauge wasn't working fixed and while I was there I had my annual service done and now I've got my annual service light that just came on and it's impossible uh, for me, the best of my understanding, without going to the dealer to have that reset, which is an hour and a half away. So I'll be driving, you'll be seeing that light in every one of my videos until next year because I have refused to, to drive you know, all the way to my dealer and deal with getting in and all that kind of stuff to get a light turned off. It's, you know, I'm gonna try to see if there's some sort of scanner that I could buy. I'm even gonna pay the money because I'm getting to the point, I'm, I'm out of warranty now. So I'm gonna start doing some of the tinkering and stuff. If I have an issue, I'll diagnose it myself and, and stuff like that. And then the major stuff, I do have the service prepaid, so I will continue to get it serviced. So I'm not messing with this. I'm just gonna ride, it bothers the hell out of me. But what it made me think of was back in the day you know i'm a middle-aged guy so back in the day motorcycles were so much simpler and you know i had you had a different type of problems my first brand new bike that i bought i think i was maybe 19 or 20 years old i bought a yamaha fzr 600 okay it was their 600 series sport bike 
Uh, it wasn't the top of the line. Uh, I didn't go for the, the leader bike until later on. Uh, but that bike had no ABS, no traction control, no wheelie control. Two gauges, a, a clutch and a, and a uh, speedometer. And that was it. And without the electronics, I rode the hell out of that bike. I mean, I really, really, I was just, I was young, I was excited about having a bike, and I lived on it. I used it as a commuter. And then I moved to Florida from up north, and I rode that bike for a solid year. I was just, it was the winter time. I moved down in, in the end of October, just when uh, Connecticut, where I'm from, started getting really bad, and I was just unbelievably excited and overwhelmed with the fact that the weather was perfect. So I parked my damn car and I used it. I rode rain or shine with that motorcycle. There was even one time I sold the car that I had and and just, you know, rode my motorcycle. And it was just wonderful. Now the rain or shine thing nowadays, now that I'm older, but when I was young, it didn't matter. I threw a rain coat on or some rain gear and I went and I rode. But I never had an issue with that bike. The only thing I had was it had the, it had carburetors, four carburetors. And when I moved, um, the carburetors got flooded, and, and I maybe, you know, missed talking. The, I put it on the moving truck, and I don't know if they pushed it, they laid it down when they ended up laying it down. I don't know. I mean, I really don't know what happened, but when I got went to pick it up, it wouldn't start. And all the plugs were fouled out. You know, so, not a big deal. I mean, but... I've never had that issue with a fuel injected bike, so you know maybe I'm talking through my ass because you know I'm a I can do pretty much any mechanical work on a car, but when it comes to bikes, I'm a little limited. A lot of it's the same, but a lot of it's different. Uh, if that makes any sense. So that was the only problem. I went in, I changed all the spark plugs. I used to drop my home oil. Um, I even jetted my carb when I put an exhaust in it. The whole nine yards, of my carbs. I, the whole nine yards. And now with this technology, you know, don't get me wrong, ABS is a great thing. When it first came out and I first started seeing it hit bikes and it was an option and it was real expensive, it, it was a, it was pretty cool. But I rode for years and years on either pre-owned bikes that I owned, my Yamahas, uh, I've had a couple VMAX, I had an FTR 1000, I've had some CBR, some R1s, and all my older bikes you know had barely any technology and then when technology started it was like abs was introduced and uh, i think the first bike that i really noticed abs and this was just you know it, it's probably not the first bike by any means but the honda vfr uh they started offering abs on that and i thought that was just unbelievable yeah it was really 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 cool so yes i like the fact that you know with a bike with this much torque you know, wheelie control is nice. I, I set it at three uh, so that the wheel will come up, but it's not gonna, you know, go crazy. I really don't even have to cover the brake. It, it's pretty controllable. And then uh, I have the traction control and then my ABS is set at two so that I could really get heavy on the brakes. Now, one thing I have to say about the technology on a Ducati, and I can't really say this is uh, one of my, you know, this is the most, technical bike that I've ever owned it's not intrusive whatsoever uh, I very rarely will let the wheelie control or the traction control actually activate you know I'm a heavier guy so you know it's not standing up every time but it's definitely powerful enough that I can get on it and, and crank the front wheel up but I could you know as long as I you know I'm slower on the clutch but I can pound through the gears from like 0 to 130 or 0 to 120 and the wheel comes up a little bit but the, the wheelie control light never comes on it's just it's weird and uh, occasionally you know I hit some leaves one time and the traction control kind of you know saved my butt so yes uh, and uh, it, it makes a difference but Lord it gives you so many opportunities to have different things go wrong and, and different problems with your bike that, and I miss the old days. I really do. Uh, 
you know, maybe I just need to find a classic bike. But then, you know, that was the first thing. It's kind of a, you know, it's kind of a hypocritical statement. First thing I thought of by, you know, maybe finding an old Kawasaki, you know, Z1000 or something like that. You know, just an old rat rod bike and put a real loud exhaust on it and just, you know, the old style bike. And uh, I was like, well, it doesn't have ABS. You know, forgetting, you know, you kind of get spoiled when you, when you have something like that. So, you know, I'm going to cut this video short today. I just wanted to touch base and uh, say, hey, uh, let you know, uh, Dave, great job getting some videos up. It's, uh, it's nice to see. Keep up the good work. And, uh, throw a camera on your helmet. And, uh, you know, if you want, I'll do a, do a quick video on how, how I set mine up and, and what I used. Uh, but it's it's pretty uh, pretty cool. I mounted mine on the side because of the style helmet that I have. Uh, but it uh, works pretty darn good. And uh, I got a microphone put up inside, no exposed wires. I clip it on, clip it off, boom, I'm done, and and I'm riding. All right. So thank you all for uh, stopping in and spending some time with me today. And I uh, appreciate y'all, and I will talk to you soon.